Hey guys and girls, welcome to a Guitar Hour special. We are in uh, lovely, beautiful, sunny Oxford, and we've uh, Tom Quayle, myself, David Beebe, and Dave Bronze have come down. Last night we watched a rather good gig. Rather good. Yeah, I've got my brain is coming out my ears right now. We had the uh, honour of witnessing something really great, uh, the amazing Jonathan Kreisberg. Welcome. Hey, welcome to the time. Yeah, actually, <laughs> big round of applause. Yeah. Last night was ridiculous. Absolutely amazing. So thanks very much. Yes. First of all, thanks for yes. agreeing to do this. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, the sun's come out just in... Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, so first things then. So um, how's, the, how's the, the current tour going? It's just been a marath marathon uh, yeah. European tour, isn't it? Yeah, this is the middle of... Uh, we've got 21 dates and the first part of the run is 11 days straight with no days off different city every day You're insane. so it's yeah it's <laughs> i am it's i've never had one that was that dense what was the longest you've done before no usually i would i would go about five or six days with a day off but this one still quite just kind of they all came in you know at the same time and i took them all and then i went oh okay <laughs> how are we gonna do this how are we gonna get from here to here yeah so it's been exciting. I learned how to drive on the left side uh, yesterday. That is that is impressive. I was. I mean, I've been to Oxford a few times, and even yesterday, for the third time I've been, it's still terrifying. Like the cyclists. Yeah, a lot of cyclists. You yeah. Got some, uh, yeah. You got some good driving skills. <laughs> you know, the guys had faith in me, and I, I appreciate that for them. Kind of. They got here in one place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you did the gig. So but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we made it, and uh, and. Uh, you know, it's always, I think the trick when you're on the road is like, despite everything that happens, you keep a good sense of humor. And if you have guys in the band that are like that, it just makes everything easier, you know? And I think the guys that I'm traveling with right now are really fit that bill. And that's what, you know, I think it also kind of, not all, but most good musicians you'll find have a good sense of humor. You know what I mean? Because you have to, to live that life. Yes. You know what I mean? Well and truly. You know? But these guys, are they, because they were saying last night, because it's the first time I've ever seen you live. I mean, I've listened to all your stuff, obviously. I've been hero worshipping for many of you, many of you. Oh, man. But <laughs> do you normally travel with these guys? Because the drummer and the bass player are your, when you're touring. But David's new, isn't he? David yeah, Boston's yeah, David. New to yeah, exactly. Blew my mind last night. Man, Incredible. yeah. He tends to do that to people. It's frightening. <laughs> I mean, just the faces that I found myself pulling was just ridiculous. <laughs> Incredible. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. But those are the guys you normally travel with. Yeah, so so Rick and Colin have been playing with me for probably, I want to say we went like about three or maybe even four years, you know? Oh, right, okay. So, you know, it was basically in that time when I was uh, recording or, or, or at least it was, it was in the wake of Shadowless that I kind of changed up the band a little bit, you know. I mean, I played for years with Mark Ferber and, and Matt Penman, who were great musicians. And uh, and just kind of like changed it up for something a little uh, different. I, I was about to say younger, but you know, I, I love, you know, you know. Matt Penman an email. You know. Alan Cosbeck says you're real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, those guys, you know, they also got, you know, got very, very busy, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so it's, it's like, it's cool to kind of find some guys that are kind of have a new perspective and are like the next generation of those guys, you know what I mean? That have something new to say. And I had heard Colin a few times and something about Colin that I really like is he's kind of that blend that I like between real organic, but also can be very exact with certain yeah, concepts, yeah. you know? So I like that feeling because it, it, it makes soloists feel uh, a little more free if it's less rigid like that the way he feels so so he had a I started playing with him it took me a second to get used to because him and Mark are really different you know um, but then you know of course once once we were in there it's like now that's like the sound I hear you know so so then uh, he kept telling me about this buddy of his Rick who had just moved from Canada and he said man this guy's gonna be like the next guy you know so finally we got him on a gig and yeah, you could, th those two instantly have, have a connection, you know. Yeah, the interaction. It was incredible. Yeah. It was yeah. really special. To yeah. It was, you know, milliseconds for picking things up from little, little yeah. rhythmic elements that were just being picked up by everybody. It was pretty, pretty amazing. I know for the audience, those are kind of like, despite the moments where you start to listen even more intently because you realize everybody's talking to each other. Right. You say last night. Really conversational aspect of it. Was, yeah, yeah it's amazing. That's, that's very that's very important. You know, I think for me it's like 
whether it's traditional jazz or more progressive jazz, that's the kind of thing that we have to remember is that's what jazz was yeah, yeah. when it first began, you know what I mean? That's mm. what makes it special, really, is the way, you know, it was basically a bunch of guys marching down the street in New Orleans playing a melody, and one guy kind of changed something, yep. and the other guy behind him went, and he reacted to that, and then next thing you know, <laughs> it was happening, you know? Yeah. So that's still, for me, that's something important. <laughs> playing uh, I think it was Body and Soul and he played like an intro to something and I just just it's, it's one of the one of the few times in my life when I left a gig not because I didn't like it but because I, I wanted to go home and practice you know I feel uh, you did that to me last yeah. night but <laughs> we were all engaged <laughs> so you're like, passing that's why you guys are in a rush to get out of here <laughs> yeah. okay, all right. but um, you got yeah, one no. guitar in the hotel room fighting over it's like oh yeah. practice now <laughs> well that's nice no that's a, it's a, it, you know it's that's that's really nice to hear because I mean to me it's like that's the best stuff doesn't make you feel it should make you feel like it shouldn't be elitist you know what I mean it shouldn't it shouldn't make you feel like oh that that music is pushing me down you know it should make you feel like wow man I want to go learn about music more and I want to it should elate you whether it's emotionally or even technically or whatever I mean and that D Dave has that quality which I really which I really remembered and, and then. You know, Will Vincent, who's played in my band for years, playing saxophone. I start. He also is a great piano player, and I would have him start copying, playing, uh, you know, chords more and more on certain tunes. And one day he was like, "Maybe you want a piano player." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." So my first thought was Dave. You know, and well, yeah. uh, and it's been great. We've you know he's been playing in the band. Also, we've been doing some duos, which we did a couple duos in California and New York, and uh, that's a really a really different thing as well, you know, doing these two in that, in that situation. But me, me and Dave have, you know, a, definitely like a certain kind of energy or heart or something that, that happens that's kind of similar. Even though, we, 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 you know, we have some different lines and stuff like that, the, 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 way, the way we kind of approach the music, I think, is kind of similar. What was really cool to watch was how you were getting off on everything you played last night. Yeah. Like you yeah. were pulling, yeah. like I was pulling faces and you were like... Yeah. Yeah, like I was serious. right in there with you. Yeah, man, it was amazing. No, I mean that's the thing. You want to play with guys that inspire you and kind of, you know, tug at you a little bit, like your ear. You know, like what's oh, there's something else. Whoa, yeah. you know what I mean? So, so that's happened with him as well as the way he comps. You know, yeah, like so a lot of times the, the way he's comping that to just soloing and the comping. I was like, mm -hmm. I just found that really yeah, amazing. yeah, he's pushing pushing me, you know, and, and kind of... There's something really nice about the the, the, the conversation that you're having with these sort of, like, different generations of, like, you can see, like, the diff different generations of jazz and the guys, like, and you're all in that same stage, have, oh, yeah. like, sharing that tradition and then making something new. It was, it was truly... No, when you see, it, like, him and Rick, I mean, you know, they're, they're about, you know, almost 30 years between them, mm -hmm. and, and they're, like... Their buds, you know, like the way that they they interact, even off the bandstand, it's it's great to see that. And I, I even said that to Colin last night when I watched it. And I said, yeah, it's great about this music that, you know, you get people of all different backgrounds and ages that really, you know, I mean, me and Lonnie Smith, you know, I play with Dr. Lonnie yeah, Smith. Yeah, we're like, 
we're really similar, man. It's funny. So it's like we hang out. It's just like watching like an old married couple or something. You know? it's, it's hilarious, you know. People people say we should we need a reality show, you know. But it's great. I mean, it's like you know that the music is what bonds us and and kind of in that way, music is like a really special thing. You know what I mean? So, oh, go on. Well, I was just thinking about because that that's probably only the second jazz gig that I've been to, and the really big thing I took away from is that. I thought Bradford has like, you know, world class jazz clubs <laughs> on every corner. This is a rock, is a rock guy. I'm, I'm the yeah. rock guy. Really, <laughs> but but what I thought was interesting yeah. is that it wasn't a guitar gig. It was just like, it was just all about the music as a whole. And and my feeling was, I've got to go to more jazz gigs because there's something about being in the room that you just couldn't pick up off a YouTube video. I think a lot of Guy, young guys now just saying, oh, we'll just check it out on YouTube. But actually being in the room and, and appreciating the interaction between the drumming and the bass and the keys and the, what you were doing is something that you just, even if you can see it and hear it on the video, the difference of being in the venue for me was really, really inspiring. So. That's beautiful to hear. I, mean, I, I love hearing that because for me, it's like, I love all the technology and, and it's great what it can do for us, you know what I mean? But that last thing you just said about how, like, you know, you're watching it on, on a computer and technically you would think with video sound, it's the same thing. But what you're talking about is like the, uh, you know, the other dimension, so to speak, the one yeah. that you can't really describe. And I think that in general, technology can't replace that, you know, and that's something that in the long run, when people say, oh, you know, jazz was like the thing from the 40s or something, and it's, I actually don't believe that at all man I think jazz is like really a frame of mind you know what I mean mm. it's like it, it's not it can't grow old as long as there's people out there doing it the way the way you know we're talking about I was about to say the way we're doing it, but I don't mean that it's just not just us it's a lot of people yeah. doing it you know but I mean that thing I, I like that you, I it. like that you can't. Well, that's what it is. I yeah. felt part. I felt exactly. involved in it. Like, because you are, you are drawn in into the music. I felt like even though I don't understand a lot about jazz, it just really communicated and spoke to me in a way that I was. It surprised me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. was, well, we were, we were and we were speaking to you. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, that's the difference, you know. I mean, because I, you know, I have background playing classical music, playing rock. I had a rock group that opened for. Vi and Malmstein and all that stuff back when I was about <laughs> Excuse me? You, know, <laughs> you, yeah. for you guys don't know about that? In yeah. fact, yeah. our yeah. audience actually... I, just I knew your audience would be interested in that <laughs> stuff. <you laughs> the guitar audience is quite... We, we're not exclusively a jazz show, so right. we, we're quite broad, but we do have... Yeah, I think we've already of, lost about 90% <laughs> of you guys <laughs> well, so well, far. Well, we do have a fusion kind of skew, I guess. Um, no, in a big way, yeah. Um, we have a fusion. So, I mean, just a bit of... Maybe if you just go to a couple of minutes about, about your background and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what I was going to say was, you know, is... I love that, that kind of music, and I've played a lot of different stuff, you know. Um, but there is something that I can say conclusively as being someone who's done all that stuff, that there is, you know, of course there's something special about great classical music, something special about great blues, something special about great, you know, technical guitar music, you know what I mean? But the thing about jazz is the thing you just mentioned, is that the communication level between the band becomes so deep that it also it ripples out like a pond you know what i mean like the, and it, and it actually starts to to some people are more direct with the audience but the way we are in this band is like it's with each other and then it also kind of goes out and and turns to you guys and brings you guys in you know what i mean that's something that i i don't see in a lot of other kinds of music you know there's a lot of obvious like in a lot of rock music there's like this obvious like are you ready to rock you know what yeah. i mean yes we are it's you like know the, it's like <laughs> that's the interaction it's the punch yeah. that's approach, why we it? are here <laughs> we will do that now <laughs> perfect you know what i mean that and that's great but that's that's it's very less direct. organic experience yeah to, it's to it's it's almost and, like and you could even say sometimes and i won't say that about the best rock bands but with a lot of rock bands that becomes it's too obvious you know what i mean it's like we are rocking you. We are being rocked. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's almost it's almost like it's an agreement. Yeah, it's an agreement. And then, but then, it, in a way, it almost becomes like we're rocking you again, just like we did last night. And this is where we do this. And now he does this. And then now you're really gonna get rocked because now it gets louder and faster. You know what I mean? That stuff is like it becomes contrived a little bit. You yeah. know? And, and that's and I mean, people are always wondering why. 
people still listen to Zeppelin and The Who and all these bands because it was like jazz back then, actually. There was a lot of looseness. You listen to uh, John Entwistle, the way he was playing bass, it's basically like a jazz bass player, you know what I mean? Like live at Leeds, you know, that stuff. Yeah, it's like Cream, I guess, like Japanese ginger yeah, beer. I mean, like, it's a totally so different strange. thing, you know, that now, I mean, everyone's playing, they've got tracks doubled that they're playing over yep. and stuff. It's completely stuck, you know. So my point of, is that that early stuff in a way is jazz you know what I mean if you really look at what I'm talking about the frame of mind mm. then it kind of is you know what I mean mm. and uh, and that pe people really feel that and I think that now if you hear a group do, like us doing what, what we're doing that's the thing that you're talking about that's mm. the thing that like you can get on there on there but when you're there and you're there and you feel the people around you and the, and the buzz that thing that happens in the room when stuff's really like doing that and you know that's never been played like that before. This guy's playing something different, and the way that he's playing under him is totally different. The way he's reacting to that is totally, it's not gonna happen again. It's, it's amazing looking around know. the room last night. I'd say, you know, nearly half the audience at half the time had their eyes closed, yeah. myself included, because you're listening on a level that you That's don't because of the faces to. I make. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've got some pretty special faces. They were like, that's better if I close my eyes. No, but the guitar, player, <laughs> the guitar player in me wants to watch what you do, yeah, yeah, but totally. the music over, like, overcomes that to the point where yeah, yeah. I, I think what Dave's saying and I think you were the same as me in this and that like the eyes can be closed I'm not even looking at you I'm just experience, like, experiencing the music yeah, yeah. so you're listening on a deeper level like, like again mm. that thing with YouTube you would never do you wouldn't sit there in front of your computer going right 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 yeah, yeah you're right you're right that's, yeah. that, that, that's the thing that's feeling the, the energy in the room you know and I, and, that, and I like that you can't really explain why yeah. that is you know because there, there has to be some things about music that we can't really mm. put into words that's is is there a if someone is unfamiliar with your, your work is there, a, is there an album of yours that you might recommend as a start and jumping on point that you, you know, just someone wants to check out if, you know, the, one of yours that that's tough we were playing it's like picking like, one of your favourite yeah, kids yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> say like as, like Dave you know for instance um, he's, he's a rock guy he's not that into jazz so we played um, played um, I guess one yesterday in the oh. along the way yeah that, that wouldn't be my first choice because that's like almost a special yeah. thing you know uh, I mean uh, that's a very personal record for me, and, and I, I love when people tell me they enjoy it or touch them or whatever. But uh, for a first one, I, I, it would probably be one of the group records. You know, not not the not the crisscross or the standards kind of thing, and not that. Maybe, I think it would be hard for me between Wave Upon Wave, the most recent, mm -hmm. Shadowless, and South of Everywhere. One of those three would probably be. Um, Wave upon wave, probably, great. Tune. Probably wave upon wave because yeah. it's the newest, you know. Yeah. But I, I know that maybe there's some things about South of Everywhere that are maybe more accessible. That did it for me. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean yeah. it's 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 still very complex. Um, there's some heavy tunes but, of like on that as yeah. well. Like I mean, South of Everywhere is such a catchy. Like, it's very catchy. Man, yeah. like yeah. my my wife when I was I was transcribing that a lot. My my wife was going mad at that because she kept hearing it over and over and over again. So, and then she keeps singing it. Did it? She's like, ah, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be worse. She could be singing Macarena. So, you know, it's, you know, but that yeah. is a really good one. So I'm going to be singing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can put them together. This could be a nice thing. <laughs> next album. Yeah. The concept. South of Macarena. So but yeah, no, I, mean, I think South South of Everywhere is, is is maybe. I also notice a lot a lot of rock guys like that record. Maybe there's something about the energy. But uh, yeah, like I said, wave upon wave is. It's like maybe rhythmically not as complex as South Africa, but it's harmonically a lot more complex, complex yeah. I think. So it's, it's tough between those two. What, what would you say? Possibly, I'd probably say uh, South of Everett because that's what yeah. did it for me. But then I do think there are some very well-known tunes on that. Um, on oh, on one. one. In the, yeah, yeah. For, for a, like a, a rock guy that doesn't listen to much jazz at all, um, might be, uh, might be like, uh, just familiar and that they know the tunes maybe. So right. Just, you know, well, uh, what was interesting for me was hearing tunes I knew and, and then hearing how you'd, you'd use the melody and you, then you seem to be putting really interesting sort of dyads and triads underneath that were really surprising and expected, kind of beautiful. I mean, I'm really, this is a lot of orchestral music and for me, I was saying it's like Holst and Debussy, like, well, yeah. like kind of yeah. in... That's but, funny, you just, but, you but just all, mentioned it's all like you two, of my first, two of my first uh, classical... Uh, recordings that I owned. I mean, my parents had stuff, but the two of those first that I owned was The Planets and La Mer, you know? So yeah. it's funny you just mentioned two. So, you know, that there's something you said about your early influences, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, that, well that's interesting, that, because that just yeah. jumped out at me, that the, 
those two things. I was wondering, my, my question was going to be about if you have, you know, if, when you're taking a melody uh, and you uh, put in the harmony underneath, is that something where you just keep messing around till you find a voice and you like, or is there already a built vocabulary that you draw upon to come up with that? Or is it, how, how, is it an organic thing or is it right. something? Well, first of all, I appreciate that you used the American terminology by saying messing around. Because I know you wanted to say fiddling about. <laughs> fiddling about. I was going to say noodling, actually. Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. That's universal. Um, no, ba basically, uh, you know, I've come at the harmonic thing and, and the chordal thing from a lot of different angles. Um, and only in through teaching do I kind of figure out how to explain what it is. So you sort I mean, of reverse engineer it. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which always kind of is funny. Then you're teaching, you try and do exactly that. And you're like, well, maybe that's not it. But <laughs> I mean, I can say that at this point, I I wouldn't know that I was good at that, except for the fact that people tell me, man, I like how you, you know, you do this. It's different than other people. And I, I maybe, it's just the way I, th I, I hear it. I think part of it is, it's a great owl. Got some something. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's getting involved. Look, got camera shy. Yeah, he's yeah. embarrassed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but basically, you know, I, I can only just also describe like the, the way that I got to stuff. One thing I'll say is I always liked orchestral music and, I, and I've listened to that, but also piano music, you know, piano trios, solo piano. Um, that's been a big influence. So that being said, when I'm playing, in my head I'm probably hearing that more than guitar, you know what I mean? Um, I, think, I think that I started out by doing, you know, kind of block chordy kind of things. Uh, and I, and I, I did it fairly randomly, you know, like I would uh, have one voice that I liked and I would figure out how to use it in many different situations, uh -huh. you know? But then I realized the, uh, the limitations of that at some point, and I started developing certain systems of going through the chords. Uh, some of them, most of them are these, the drop systems, you know, the drop twos, drop threes, uh, drop two fours. You know, these are all different types of, of taking a stacked seventh voicing and then dropping one or two notes to create a, a wider voicing, which you all play, you just don't maybe know exactly the, uh, where it came from, you know what I mean? When you play like one of these silly C major seven chords with the, with the power chord and the bottom and then the B and the E, that's a drop two, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's only one of four inversions that the other three are beautiful, you know what I mean? Um, so doing that, then also learning how to sub out certain voices to create different sounds, you know? Um, you know, I went through that system and then I could run it through any tune with perfect voice leading, you know what I mean? Then I wasn't randomly jumping around with voices I liked, you know what I mean? That was a big change. Um, the other thing I started doing was uh, thinking a bit more, this is almost like on another angle, was thinking a little more counter, contrapuntally, you know what I mean? Like a, a bass note and a melody, looking at standards that way playing tunes with a bass note and a melody, uh, which kind of gave me a little more th thinking about the bass, you know, almost like two hands on a piano, you know what I mean? That gave me a little more independence. Um, so that's two, two directions. The other thing which, which you're kind of getting at, which is probably the thing that I did the most because it just came naturally trying to sound like a piano player, literally playing chord and a melody, is I would play melodies and I would make the melody sing no matter what. They would never, the chord would never take precedence over the melody. You know what I mean? Because the second that happens, it's a specific guitar sound to mm. me. When you say, boom, wee, boom, da, da, dee, da. There's a beautiful touch you, you know? have where, where it seems like you pull, you're playing the melody, but then you sort of pull the chord from nowhere, and there's, the attack on it is so sweet. Well, well, the attack well, is incredible. Well, that, but, but that's, the, that's, that's all because I was trying to achieve what I'm saying. Yeah. So what I would practice was, always singing the melody. I say singing, but what I mean by that is separating it and, and striking it a little different. 
from the way I attack the chord. So it may be a pick on the melody, then it's holding, and then I find a voicing that I can do while still holding that note. You know what I mean? Um, and then I'll usually do that with a pick and fingers, so it's got a slightly different sound. You know what I mean? And, in, in a, and it's like you're playing your pedals as well, I've noticed in a way. Like, that's so, looks so... I mean, when I've got my pedal board, I like stomp it on, don't really right. about it. It's like you're massaging the, the sound out of this. It's like this, like, it's incredible way oh, thanks. of concocting it. Well, that's, you know, that's... that's like, it seems a very organic... I imagine, like, thinking back to someone like how Hendrix would use the pedal, like, how, you know, it's not just set in one way, but it's right. like you're changing it on the fly and responding to the... And that seemed to have a great effect on them, what you were playing and... Yes. Really yeah, that's, and that's gotten a little more intense, I feel like, the last five years or something like that. To the point where like sometimes I think about sitting down again. I used to sit down when I played, um, like when I recorded trioing and, and uh, Unearth, I used to sit down and play and I would have both feet available for pedals. All right. Late, you know, since then, this has probably been over 10 years I've been standing up on the gigs, but sometimes now I find myself moving my feet enough that I'm, I'm, I'm almost gravitating towards going back. Playing on your heels. Yeah, not because I like to sit down when I'm playing, because I actually like standing up and I like the connection with the audience a little more. But yeah, but uh, <coughs> getting yeah, having you know more more uh, options with my feet, you know.